Yes guys, welcome back to Seven Golf and welcome back, or welcome down to the Hashtag Arena. This is the lovely Coles Park Stadium where Hashtag Train and Play. Uh, I'm doing a little intro here because we're, we're actually filming a video here today. What, we're training for Hashtag, we're filming some other content as well. But today's video guys is a very, very special one. Today is the video that I celebrate hitting 100,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And a massive thank you to you guys I'm doing a well overdue Q&A, answering some of your most asked questions in my content or asking me in general across social media over the last year or so really. The last Q&A I did is when I hit 50,000 subs, so it's long overdue. So you've been sending in your questions on Instagram, on Twitter and in the YouTube comments and actually I'm going to reward everyone that has sent in those questions by giving one of you a very special prize. Out of all the questions I answer today, I'm going to do a prize draw from all the people that wrote them in, the ones I use. And one of you is winning a signed Rory McIlroy M3 driver. Double decent. Let's get up into the commentary booth and let's get some questions answered. Right, so let's get into this. Callum Smith asks, what was the best piece of advice you received when you started out playing golf and why did it help so much? Hoping your response will be able to help beginners like myself. Right, the biggest thing for me was someone told me to focus on my short game. And basically, very early on, I fell in love with doing short game challenges, sometimes by my own, sometimes with friends, in and around the chipping green, the putting green, just trying to play little games. And for me, until you're like seriously low single figure handicap or scratch player, you're always gonna miss greens, you're always gonna hit the ball over the place to a certain extent. But if you can chip and putt better than the people around you, you're gonna lower your score so, so much. So I actually was told you should have, if that's all your practice time, you should have 80% of it should be short game. Only 20% should be on the range hitting ball. Now that's what everyone does when they get into golf. They smash the ball on the range and they absolutely love it. So that's my biggest tip that was told to me and for you guys. Dan Basily, I hope that's pronounced correctly, has asked when is the next episode of YouTube's Go Golfing going to be out? P.S. I would love True Geordie as a guest. Oh, that could be a great one. That would be a great one. I'm good friends with Brian, True Geordie. Maybe we can make that happen. Guys, leave me a comment below. Let me know who you'd like to see on the next episode of YouTubers Go Golfing. So far, we've had Spencer, we've had hashtag Ryan. There's a few more in the pipeline, but leave me a comment below who you want to see next. But next episode coming soon, Dan. Luis Garcia. I wonder if that's the Luis Garcia of uh, ex Liverpool fame. Probably not, but you never know. Hi, Luis. Um, has asked me what was your most enjoyable round of golf and was it because of the course, company or how you played? Right, I'm going to be honest, it's a bit of both because I was very, very lucky to play very, very well on a very nice golf course and with some very good friends. So it leaps out to me straight away. It is my lowest ever round of golf. I shot a bogey free 66 at Port Rush, which is the host venue of next year's the 2019 Open Championship. A heck of a golf course, let me tell you. I love Lynx golf. I know it takes a while to get used to, but I love the challenge of hitting different sorts of shots. It was the most amazing golf course. We've got a very, very calm day. A bogey 366 was just a dream come true. And I played with some good friends of mine, Daryl Selby, who some of you know, has been on the channel many, many times, and a very good friend of both of ours, a guy called Robbie, who is a hilarious guy to play golf with. He's so funny, he's very, very talented. He hits the ball miles, but also he has these head off moments, misses short parts, hilarious moments. That was such a great trip to Northern Ireland we did, but that was my favorite one that leaps out at me. And yeah, for me, the guys who love golf, you guys know, when you play well, you're having fun, right? You always remember those rounds, you play well. Certainly your memory of a golf course is determined by how well you play. Nathan Johnson asks, uh, awesome job on 100,000 subs. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, my question is, what's the best way for amateurs to know how far we carry the ball without access to TrackMan or GC Quad? Good question, and I think this is massive for people. You know, I'm just an amateur golfer as well, like you guys, but one of the biggest things I learned, which helped me get down from um, single figure uh, into single figures, when I got down and changed my grip, that was massive. And then the next thing is when I started thinking about course management a bit more, and also learning things like carry distance. I'm now a four, Handicap's actually gone up for the first time ever this year. Gone up from three to four. Maybe I'll elaborate on why I think that is later. But basically, go to an indoor simulator. There's loads around. Some of them at a local golf range will have it. Some local golf clubs have an indoor simulator and they've got all the technology there. So you can figure out how far your ball actually goes in the air. The most important thing. Different grass, different conditions, different um, weather makes a difference to how far the ball rolls out and obviously different clubs and how high you hit them. And everyone thinks oh, they hit their five iron 190 or whatever. I bet you don't. I bet you don't hit your five iron or your seven iron or whatever iron as far as you think you do. Because what happens then is you, go, you stand on a par three and the hole's 190 yards and then there's a bunker at 180 and you think you can hit your, your five iron. Now if the bunker wasn't there, you might get away with it. But you're probably not carrying your five iron the full 190. 
So you've got to start figuring out what it carries in the air. And most people hitting the bunker don't understand why it's come short. It's because it's not the carry distance you're calculating. You need to really figure out how far the ball actually goes in the air. It's quite a big one. Right, it's getting a bit nippy up here now in the stand. And actually training's about to start. I might even get my boots on tonight. But there's lots more questions to come. I'm going to go down there, play some football. And I'll see you guys in a minute for some more questions. Yes guys, morning. Uh, the morning after training, training was a lot of fun. Good to get the boots on, been a little while. I'm gonna take Penelope over to nursery now. Where's she going? There she is. And then I'm gonna sneak to the driving range, hit some balls and answer some more of your questions. Let's get in the car. You ready Nels? Uh oh, she likes the camera. Really is nothing quite like an empty driving range. Let's warm up. Right, let's get in to the clubhouse, in the warm, and let's answer some more of these questions. Okay, inside one of the lovely function room suites here at Centurion Club, and uh, yeah, let's just jump straight back into it. Uh, next question is from Harry Cheek. Your channel got me into golf, that's amazing, mate. That is the best thing, best comment I love to hear, so very good to hear that. What's your favorite shot to play, and what's your bogey shot? Uh, talked a little bit about it earlier, I, I love short game shots. I like being able to get really close and see the results, so nothing more I love than like chipping it close, trying it up and down, or holding a long putt for birdie, or even a par save. As for my bogey shot, where you saw me hitting balls out on the range, the thing I really struggle with, and have struggled even more so since my back injury, is ball striking, like medium to long irons. Remember, there's a long par three, it's sort of, uh, yeah, it's not really suiting my game, to be honest. I just struggle to compress and turn through with my back, and I've always sort of had a natural sway instead of a turn. So it's, I think that's probably what caused the back problem, bad technique from my early years of golf. And then since the, I've had the back issue and had the little procedure on it, it's still just quite sensitive around that area. So I sort of, instead of sort of turning through the ball, I sort of stand up on the way back to like take pressure off it. So long iron shots, definitely my bogey shots. We need to work on them. So uh, yeah, sessions out on the range, hitting irons is, is what I need. Colin Lawson asks, what is the course you most want to play? Well, I mean, the obvious answer to that is Augusta National. Some of you guys know how much I love that place. I love going to the Masters. I went this year. Uh, it was crazy. I've been a couple of times now. To play that one there would be amazing. But one thing I really want to do is I really want to go and play in different continents. So like I've never I've never even been to Asia. Never been to China, Japan, anything like that. And this week, as some of you would have seen, is the WGC HSBC Champions event. So that course, Sheshan, that looks unbelievable as a golf course. I'd love to get over there and play that one day. And that is a very, very good link for me to move on to the sponsor of this week's video, and that is WeChat. Now, as you guys know, the WGC event is being hosted over there in Asia at Sheshan Golf Club. And basically, they've got a ridiculous field. It's one of the last big major events of the year. You've got Dustin Johnson, Jason Day, Rory McIlroy. You've got defending champion Justin Rose. You've got major winners Brooks Kepka, Francesco Molinari, and Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, Molly Wood are there. So uh, it's a massive, massive tournament, massive, massive week. Um, I'm very, very excited to see how the boys get on. But you guys can see some exclusive behind the scenes footage on WeChat's Facebook page. So link down below to their Facebook page. Head over there. You can follow the tournament all week. And you can also get some very, very exclusive behind the scenes footage. And if you do happen to also have the WeChat app, you can also get some ridiculously cool stuff. So WeChat's a massive social mobile platform and they've got some incredible technology on there. And one of the technologies they're employing this week is over in the golf course in Sheshan, there's a virtual reality section where you can literally cruise and tour around the golf course on the app and you can see what it's like to stand on the first and have like a 360 degree view or on the 18th green or even in the clubhouse. So amazing stuff. And in fact, if you're actually at the golf course with the app, you can use the app via a QR code to actually pay for stuff in a spectator village. So it's really great to see WeChat getting involved in the HSBC or the WGC HSBC champions. They're actually the first social platform to sponsor a WGC event. And they also sponsor Haitong Lee, uh, one of the big name players in the field. So great stuff coming from them. Great to see them getting involved. Head to the link below, the WeChat Facebook page for more exclusive content about the week.
Clogus Horn asks, now that you're working on the business side of Hashtag United, I'm wondering what stuff you do day to day and how you balance the involvement you have with the club nowadays with your golf practice and keeping the standard high. Oh, good question. Interesting one. So it's important to address this. So obviously I've been involved in Hashtag United from the very, very start. I'd sort of fallen out of love with football a little bit, to be honest. And I was massively getting into my golf uh, when we started Hashtag. And Hashtag brought me back in, showed me why I love football game. We've got such a great bunch of lads. We've done some amazing things, going on global tours, playing at Wembley in front of thousands of people. You know, I scored that penalty at Wembley Stadium uh, in front of 20,000 people. Like, amazing moment, celebrating with Spencer in the corner flag. We've done some amazing, amazing things. Um, but as the team's now progressed, and with all the other stuff I do, so some of you may or may not know, as well as all the stuff I do on my golf channel, which realistically is quite a small part of what I do in my day-to-day -day life, uh, I also have my own um, business where I represent and uh, basically manage people like Spencer, Spencer and Alex, uh, Hashtag United, I'm sort of the commercial director for that club. Also some of the players and things at Hashtag United to help them with some of their sort of uh, commercial and sponsorship side of things behind the scenes. So that's basically what I do day to day. When I'm not working, I, I wanna make sure I'm spending as much time as I can with Gina and Penelope and, and being there for her as she grows up. And I don't wanna miss any of those moments. So when I've when I've not got work, I want to be focusing on things like that. And then also my golf, you know, it's very difficult to keep, as some of you guys will know, when you get down to a low single figure player, to keep to that standard, you've got to practice an awful lot. And um, it's difficult, it's difficult. So like days like today, I've dropped Nelly at nursery. I'm here at the golf course, at like just before eight o'clock, trying to squeeze in a bit before I'm off uh, back to work. We've got stuff shooting later on with West Ham, with Spencer who just launched his 30 and 30 campaign. And then going over to the studio for rehearsals ahead of Spencer's presenting, Spencer is presenting El Clasico this weekend. This video is going to go up on Saturday. Tomorrow he's presenting. It's unbelievable on 11 Sports. Can't believe him. Very, very proud of him. It's an amazing opportunity for him. So yeah, fingers crossed that goes really, really well. Okay, this is a question that a lot of you asked, but the one I'm going to use is Sean Robert Kelly from Instagram. You get three playing partners for your dream four ball. Who are they? This is a big question a lot of golfers get asked. Basically, you're making your dream four ball to go and play one round of golf with. Who's in the round with you? So obviously I'm one of them, so I've got three spots to pick. Obviously Tiger Woods is in there. He's my golfing idol. I think he's the most incredible sportsman probably that's ever lived, so I'd have to have him in there. Another guy I really love who I've never met, and I've got to meet some great people in the stuff I do. I'm very lucky for that. But one person I've never met, hopefully maybe one day, I don't even know if he plays golf, but David Beckham, you're playing, son. You're in. So me, Tiger Woods, David Beckham, and the last spot is going to go to my ultimate hero in life, and top man, you guys know him, you guys love him, Stevie CB, my dad, he is playing with me. He got me into the game of golf, he supported my sporting career all my life. I love playing golf with him. Dad, it's me and you versus Tiger and David Beckham. Fancy it? Tiger, how much are we putting on a hole? Let's go, big boy. Luke Lomax, 2002. How proud are you that you named Scotty Pollock to be the next big thing, and he is. Yeah, amazing. Some of you that don't know, on the Hashtag United channel, we did a thing called the Hashtag United Academy, and basically we invited people from the audience to come and join the football team, and we did like a talent show, over eight episodes, millions of views, amazing series, and a young lad called Scott Pollock, who entered at 16 years old, and in the very first episode, we are watching all these hundred, we had 20,000 people apply for that show. We invited 300 down over two trial days. On the first trial day, this guy, Scotty Pollock, 16, I called it early, they interviewed me, you can all see this, it's all verifiable, and I said, that's the guy to watch, remember the name, Scotty Pollock. He not only went on to win that academy show, he then went on to join Hashtag United, from watching our videos to playing for Hashtag, being one of our best players, he then played last year's Wembley Cup final in front of 34,000 people, got man of the match, then he went and got uh, trials at Crystal Palace and has now signed a contract with Northampton Town. He's making, he was on the bench recently in a Lou 2 game. He's an absolute hero, he's a great lad. And yeah, I'm very, very proud, but I can't take any credit, he's done it all himself. I may have noticed it early on, but you know, I don't think there was anything that was that difficult in noticing it. He had talent from the beginning, so hopefully he's gonna go a long way in the game. But yeah, great moment for, for hashtag that and what a product. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll get him back on loan one day. Ooh, what do you reckon? Leon Dawson says, what would 15 year old Seb think of your life now and have you ever had a hole in one? God, at 15 years old, I, I, I definitely wouldn't have thought I'd have any sort of involvement in the world of golf. I was a guy doing my GCSEs, uh, obsessed with football, and I was probably starting to think about whether I'd go to university or not. I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life, to be honest. And my dad's always run his own businesses. I was always thought one day I'd run my own business. I had no idea doing what, to be honest. Always hoped I'd do that. And now to be in the position I'm in where I've, I've got my own business and, you know, working with things like Hashtag United as well, doing all the stuff I do with Spencer. 
all my golf content, like beyond any of my expectations, I'm so, so lucky and I'm very, very grateful to everyone who watches, not just my content on this golf channel, but Spencer's content, hashtag United content, all that stuff because yeah, I'm a very, very lucky boy. Have I ever had a hole in one? I am gonna officially say no. I have two technicalities that I don't count. Okay, so I'm just clarifying that. I don't count these as hole in ones. Apparently when I was like, I don't know, like 10, when I was like, as I said, just trying out golf, my dad took me to a pitch and putt, might have been younger than that, uh, where I literally like couldn't even hit a golf ball and it was like, the holes were like 50 yards. And I do sort of remember it. Apparently it was like a 60 yard hole. I hit like a five iron. It didn't even leave the ground. It just P rolled all the way, smashed into the flag and went in. So technically I have had a hole in one on a golf course, but it was a par three golf course and I don't really remember it. Uh, I've had um, one playing on my own. Again, I don't really count it. Playing at a course near me in Hemel. Uh, I was sort of just practicing. And to be honest, I was throwing a few balls down. So it wasn't technically my first shot. It was on a par three, about 120 yards, obviously a par three, 120 yards. And I had like, I was working on my wedges. So I put like two or three balls down and I was like hitting wedges into the green. And I think the third, third ball I hit went down and I just disappeared. I was like, eh? got down there, there's a ball in the hole. So again, that's not in a real round. It's not with people there, no one can validate it. I know it happened, but I don't count it. So I'm still looking for the first official hole in one. Okay, possibly the last question now, Aaron LTA. Who is the best girl we've had the pleasure of interviewing, not just from a world ranking point of view, but personality and easy to interview? That is a very, very good question. Uh, I've been lucky a boy, I've got to do a lot of these in a short period of time. I also, by 11 Sports, I was taken out to the PGA Championship, they were the host broadcaster for the UK for that event, and I got to interview basically everybody off the golf course. Not quite Tiger, but I did get to meet Tiger, but I did get to interview him, so I can't, can't include him. Loads of great ones. One of the golfers I've, I've started to get a really good rapport and, and friendship with is Adrian Otegi. Um, his being obviously tailor-made and Adidas golfer as well. Uh, got to do a lot of shoots with him, got to know him, played with him quite a few times now. He's an awesome guy. In fact, I actually um, filmed some stuff with him at the launch of the Adidas Golf go-to jacket recently. We had, we had a great time. I'm gonna be posting something on my social media about that soon. But I don't know if I've ever actually interviewed him officially. I have on my channel, but not technically. He, he'd definitely be up there. Another one, you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say Rory McIlroy. One thing I love about Rory McIlroy, obviously he's an incredible golfer, but I love about Rory, he, he gives me confidence. He's not the biggest guy. I was really surprised when I met him. He's not that much bigger than me, if he's any bigger than me, and I'm like five foot eight. So Rory McIlroy, to be one of the longest hitters in the world, to create that sort of power, is very, very, very impressive. So I've interviewed Rory a couple of times now. I've uh, done some stuff with uh, Sky Sports, I've interviewed him for Sky, I interviewed him at the PGA Championship. So I'm gonna go with Rory McIlroy, he was such a nice guy. For someone who's like a mega, mega star, at the top of the game of golf, to be as humble and as nice as he was, so relaxed, easy to talk to, for like someone like myself, that was amazing. So I'm gonna go with Rory McIlroy, and that is another phenomenal link, because this video, guys, as I said at the start, I'm giving away to one of you, one of these questions that I've just read out, you guys are gonna go into a draw, and one of you is going to win a signed Rory McIlroy tailor-made M3 driver. Absolutely phenomenal. So of all the questions I've asked, I'm gonna do a little draw now. I'm gonna pick one out at random and someone's gonna win that driver. Okay, how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna scroll through the questions. I'm gonna stop on somebody's name. So I'm gonna scroll across, not looking, not looking. Stop. Leon Dawson submitted his question via Twitter. Leon, you have won the Rory McIlroy signed tailor-made M3 driver, so congratulations to you. Thank you to everybody who submitted their questions, and thank you to everybody for getting me to 100,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do drop a like on it. Leave me a comment below any questions I didn't get around to answering. I'll answer them more in the comments. And uh, yeah, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Don't forget the hashtag.